In the previous video, we looked at this 7 modulus 4, and we said we take 7 and divide it by 4 and look for the remainder. But the other way to do it is to realise we have 4, and to go round in a clock like this, from 0 to 1 to 2 to 3, as you can see me marking them off here. Then we can see that this is 7, so what you do, you go round the clock, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then you carry on when you get back to the origin, 5, 6, and then you carry round, so I've gone round 7 times, and you can see I stop at 3, so this is actually equal to 3. Let's do the same thing, but for a different example. Here we've got 4, so we have the 0, 1, 2, 3, and here we've got 5, so we go round this five times in five steps as you can see here this is the fifth step and now you can see we stop at one consequently five modulus four is one let's have a quick look at this again seven modulus four four goes into seven once and we have a remainder of three if we look at this one down here five modulus four four goes into five once with a remainder of one and we can see that we get the same answer by doing it this way where we look for the remainder compared to going round the actual mini clock that we've created but this is the key here and this is what we must realize this only works when the numbers here and here are both positive so in fact this modulus in python is not as it is in other languages it's slightly different now we'll have a look at what happens when these numbers are not both positive let's consider this example we can see this is four so we have the same clock and here we can see we've got 7, but it's minus 7. Now this means we go around the clock anti-clockwise here. So there you can see we've gone 4 steps. This is the 5th, the 6th, and the 7th step. And we stop at the 1. So this is equal to 1. Let's consider another example. Here you can see we've got 4, but it's minus 4. So what we now do, we go from 0 to minus 1, to minus 2, to minus 3, and we're going in an anti-clockwise direction. Now this is 7. And what we do here, we go in a clockwise direction. That's, this is 3, this is 4, then we carry on when we get to the origin for 5, then 6, and then finally 7. And when we get to the 7, we can see in fact that we are stopping at the minus 1. Now because we're stopping at the minus 1, this equals minus 1. Now let's consider another example. Here you can see I've got minus 4, so it's the same clock going anti-clockwise with negative numbers. But here you can see we've got 7, but it's minus 7. So this means I go anti-clockwise and I count 7 steps. So there's the 4th, we get to the origin, there's the 5th step, this is the 6th, and this one here is the 7th step. So now we stop and we can see we stop at the minus 3, so this equals minus 3. Let's have a look at another example. Here you've got 4 modulus 3. Now I've changed this now to 3. Remember it was 4 previously. So this means we produce a clock, but it goes 0, 1, 2. And I'm going to mark off each of these. Now because it's 3, we have 0, 1, 2. When it was 4, we had 0, 1, 2, 3. But the steps here are 4. So we go 1, 2, 3, and we carry on past the origin for the fourth step at which point we can see we stop at the 1. Consequently, this here is equal to 1. Let's look at the uh, sketches that I've produced for all of these particular examples we've been looking at. Now what I'm going to do is for each of these examples I'm going to write a line of code to see if my workings here are correct. Well here's the computer program. Let's have a look at the first line here. We can see that I've got a literal string then a comma, and then 7 modulus 4. Well, of course, that's this example here. So we would expect this line to give out 3, because that's what I'm predicting from this sketch. If we have a look at this one here, which is minus 7 modulus 4, we're expecting that to give 1. Now that is this line in the program here. So let's now see what the runtime actually looks like. Well, here's the runtime here. So let's go through each one in turn. 7 modulus 4 gives 3. That's what I worked out up here, as you can see. 5 modulus 4 gives 1. That's what I worked out here. Minus 7 modulus 4 gives 1, which is what we produced here when we did our sketches. This one here, 7 modulus minus 4 should give minus 1, which is what I worked out up here. This one, minus 7 modulus minus 4 should give minus 3, 
which is precisely what I worked out here. And the last one, 4 modulus 3 gives 1, which is this sketch, and we can see that gives us 1. So what we can see here is when we use the modulus, it's not really the remainder, is it, in the same sense as it is in other languages. So just be careful. When you're dealing with operators, you really need to understand them precisely to know what's actually going on. Because if you ever come across a bug sometime later in your coding experience, and it could simply stem from the fact that you have a misinterpretation of what, in fact, the modulus does. And also, another thing, I've only been doing integers here. I haven't looked at floats, for example, and I'm not going to for the time being because I want to move on to other topics. But I wanted to introduce you to this here to emphasize the point that although things look pretty straightforward, in fact, you need to understand what's behind these individual arithmetic operators. And of course, addition should be straightforward. But we've seen that this one here is often can be thought of as remainder, but only when both of the operands are positive. So if you ever want a remainder, you can use this, but you have to realize it isn't actually a true remainder operator. It's slightly different, as we've seen here. Check out the supporting website for these videos and consider subscribing to the YouTube channel and you'll get an automatic update every time I upload a new video on Python.